In this exercise, we're being asked to find a line in space that goes through these two points that are provided, negative 3, 7, 2, and 4, 7, 10. So I, I can visualize what's happening here. Um, here I've got a, a, I'll draw a little mini picture up here in the corner. Um, I've got a, a three-dimensional coordinate system, and they gave me two points. We'll call it, we'll call this guy point P. Maybe we'll call this guy point Q, let's say. So we, we want to find a line that goes between P and Q. Now, if you think back to how you write a line in three-dimensional space, we usually do this in what's called parametric form, where we write the X and the Y and the Z independently of one another in terms of a parameter T. And what we need for this set of parametric equations is a point that's on the line, which really either one of these would do fine for that because they're both on the line. But then we also need a direction vector for the line ABC. Now, if you notice in the information they gave us, that was not provided. I don't see any vectors. I see two points, but I don't see any vectors. So do you have any thoughts as to how you could find the direction vector for this line? Because I can see the green line here, but how do you find a vector that uh, points in the direction of the line? Well, let me, let me tell you. We're gonna find the vector, we're gonna create or build a vector that goes from P to Q, or Q to P, it, it doesn't really matter. So we'll call that vector V, and we're pretty comfortable um, taking line segments and converting them into component form. We studied that before. We'll do terminal minus initial. So we'll have four minus negative three. We'll do seven minus seven for the jth component and 10 minus two for the kth component. So the, uh, a direction vector for our line would be the vector seven, zero, eight, seven, zero, eight. And so in our equation, our set of parametric equations for the line, the seven is like your A, the zero is like your B, and the eight is like your C. So from here, it's just a, a simple you know, fill in the blank uh, for the remainder of the problem. We'll have an equation for X, an equation for Y, and an equation for Z. We need our X not Y not Z not, and here's our A, B, and C. Now, who, who, which one of these two guys do you want to use for your x not y not z not, or does it matter? Uh, it actually doesn't even matter. You can use either one of these guys um, because they're both on the line. I'll pick Q just just for the heck of it. So we would have four plus seven t. That's a t. Then we'd have seven plus zero t because b is zero. And then we would have 10 plus 8t. So notice you've got your x not y not z not, and then you would have your at, bt, and ct that we have listed right here. So this is your answer. Now you might have a question, you might say, well, Devin, if I used this point instead of q, if I used point p instead of q, wouldn't that give me a different answer? Not really. Uh, the parametric equations would look a little different, but it would sketch out the same line. Here's the only difference. Um, your starting point at t equals zero, instead of starting at, at q and sketching out the whole line, it would simply start at p and sketch out the whole line as t varied. So you would be at different points at different t values, but at the end of the day, you would get the same line as an end result.